I'd like to say tonight I'm thankful that God is still on the throne, that God is in control, and that we know who we can put our faith and our trust in tonight, despite what's going on in this world. Amen. He is faithful and He is just. And I'm thankful tonight that I know Him and He also knows me. Let's go over to Luke chapter 5 and verse number 1. If you like to stand whenever you get there. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon Him to hear the Word of God. Amen. I like that, that the people pressed upon Him to hear the Word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two, two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Now I want y'all to pay really close attention to this word. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to, uh, to you once again in the sweet and lovely name of Jesus. Father, I ask you, Lord, to put your hand upon this message. Open up the hearts and the souls and the minds of these dear people, Lord. Pray, Father God, that you'd bless this church and allow this to be a church that flourishes for your praise, honor, and glory. Put your hand upon this church. You said that we have not because we ask not. Help us, Lord, to get along with you in our prayer closets, to study, Father God, and to get closer to you each and every single day. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. And I'm thankful tonight, Father, you've given us a book that we can learn more about you and what uh, uh, that you approve of, Father. And I pray, Lord, that you'd approve of all worship tonight. Bind back the spirit of pride in anything that may hinder this service. In Jesus Christ's marvelous name we pray. Amen. I'd like to preach on tonight with the Lord's help is nevertheless Christians. I want to start a little three-part series tonight. And I, I, I want to preach on that word in a few different spots in the Bible. Um, this Wednesday, next Wednesday, and the Wednesday following on using the word nevertheless. Amen. Nevertheless Christians. And then the second one be... Uh, the second part will also be on nevertheless Christians, and the third part on a nevertheless God. Amen. I'm thankful tonight that we serve a nevertheless God that will never leave us and never forsake us. But back to the text tonight in Luke chapter 5 and verse number 1. I want to fo focus on verse number 5 uh, from the majority of the text. and It says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. So starting off tonight, I'd like to preach on nevertheless people that have followed after our Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy to be praised, and He is worthy to be worshipped, and He is worthy to be honored. Nevertheless, what's going on in mine and your life. But a lot of times we get distracted by the cares and the, by the trials and the tribulations and the toils of this life. And when the, world, when the wind is contrary and the waves are contrary, sometimes we like to throw in the towel. And we like to think that God is no longer on His throne and we serve this little G God. But I want to tell you tonight that God is still on His throne despite what's going on in your life, despite what's going on in the church, and despite what's going on in this world. Nevertheless, God is on His throne. Even though there be a hell, nevertheless there's a heaven. Even though there be evil, nevertheless there's good. I'm thankful tonight that we serve a God that also we have a contrary to the evil things of this world. We don't always have to look down, Christian. We can look up for our redemption draweth nigh. I'm thankful tonight that God never said in His Word that we had to look down. He told us to look up. God never told us in His Word that we have to worry. He said, casting all of our care upon Him for for he careth for us, and that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that he's with us all the time. But I want to tell you one thing tonight, Christian, that the Bible tells us that offenses must come. Do you know what that means tonight? The stumbling blocks must come. Trials must come. Tribulations must come. Gossipers must come. Evil must come. That's what the Bible tells us tonight. But we can have a heart that is prepared when them things come. That we say even if the gossip comes. Nevertheless, I'm going to serve God. Even if the evil comes, nevertheless, I'm going to serve God. Whether I can pay my bills, whether the church doors close, whether persecution comes, nevertheless, 
I'm going to serve God. Whether I get cancer, whether I get diabetes, whether my body crumbles down to the ground, nevertheless, I'm going to serve God. But the problem is tonight that we don't have a spirit that wants to worship God. Our hearts ain't lined up with God. Our minds ain't lined up with God. But we just expect God to pour these blessings out upon mine and your life and live the way we want, talk the way we want, and do the things we want because our life's a little bit hard right now. Things ain't going my way. But God's going to understand. No, let me tell you something tonight. God does look upon the heart. God does try the reins. God does try the mind. And He knows one thing tonight, that He is holy, that He is righteous, and that He is just, and He cannot look upon sin. God ain't an understanding God when it comes to playing with sin. And I want to promise you one thing tonight, that sin has pleasure for, uh, for a season, but it will bring forth death. Pride cometh before destruction. Sit down and humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You can find yourself in the secret place and worship Him in spirit and in truth. You can learn this Bible. You can know Him. And just because the trials and the tribulations and the winds come by your way does not mean that you can't serve God. Don't go after this modern Christianity. Don't listen to the things that people tell you that God will understand. You can't play with sin whether I say it or the president says it. Whether I say it or Brother Josh says it, you better dive deep inside of this book and find out who we serve tonight. We need to serve him nevertheless what's going on. Nevertheless what's going on inside of our life. He is worthy to be praised. Nevertheless what's going on in your life. And I'm thankful tonight that we can find some nevertheless Christians inside of our book. And they said unto the Lord, Master, we have torn all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless at thy word, I will let down the net. There may be things in this book that you don't agree with. There may be things in this book that don't settle well with your heart. But one thing is this. Nevertheless, at thy word, God, I'm going to believe it. Even though trials may come and our faith will be tried, nevertheless, I'm going to believe your word. Nevertheless, what anybody else says, I'm going to trust in this book. I'm going to trust in the King James Bible and stick to the old paths and stick to the old ways. Nevertheless, what anybody else says, I believe what thy word says. People may tell you it's okay to go out in God's understanding. But what does His Word say? Amen. I thank God that He gave us a book with red lettering that we can read where Jesus spoke. And we know when our Savior is talking. Amen. I'm thankful tonight that God gives us some things and that He preserves His Word. Like He said back there in Psalms, chapter number 12 and verse number 6, that the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. I want God's word for me. I want what God has to say to me because that's what's going to help me to be a nevertheless Christian. Amen. To know God's book, not Brother Nathan's words. Brother Nathan's words are feeble. Brother Nathan's words don't add up to a whole bunch. But one thing is this, that this word is swift and powerful and quicker than any two-edged sword. Give me some men of God that will say, nevertheless, whether I got going on inside of my life, I'm going to believe his word. Nevertheless, if, I don't, uh, if it don't settle well inside of my heart and inside of my mind, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's God's book. Give me God's book tonight, amen. Nevertheless, Christians, I thank God for some people that will say, Lord, give me the word. Lord, give me the book. Amen. I thank God for those that sit on the edge of their pew and begging God to speak to their hearts and to speak to their souls and to speak to their minds despite if they believe it or not. You know who the true Christians are and those who want to worship God that believe this book, Brother Josh, even if it steps on their toes, even if they don't necessarily believe in it. I talked to a lady the other day that's really close to me. You know what she said? We was talking about pastors and divorce, amen, and I'm not going to get on on that, but she said this. Her point, she said this, and I loved it. She said, even though my flesh wants to tell me otherwise, the Bible teaches me otherwise. 
And she said, I'm going to believe what the book says, even though it don't, it don't make no sense inside of my flesh. I'm going to believe what the book says. Give me what God's book says despite convenience. Give me what God's book says despite the persecution that may come along our way. Give us the book, amen. We need preaching that is filled with the Holy Ghost that can transform lives from the inside out. But the thing is today, we ain't nevertheless Christians. Nevertheless, when the wind gets contrary. But this is the thing. Man, we got we to gotta hold this thing together. We got to do this, and we got to do that, and we got to get people in the church. No, the thing is tonight, whether we try as hard as we can, if God don't want them to come, they ain't going to come. God has to be in the midst. And I'm thankful tonight that they found the Savior, and they knew that nevertheless what was going on, they better believe his word. They knew that there was troubles coming and there was trials coming. There, there was all these things going on and in the boat and all these things. And he said, nevertheless, Lord, at thy word, we're going to let down the nets. Ain't nothing worse. Ain't nothing worse than having a long day of fishing and I don't catch nothing. Ain't nothing worse than knowing that these men were making a living to feed their family from fishing. And even though they didn't catch nothing, they trusted enough in Jesus after they cleaned everything up and they got everything ready to go home and they're tired and they're beat down and they're ready to go home and to sleep in a bad day of fishing. <clears throat> the Lord comes along. Cast out your net. Cast out your net. It ain't over, amen. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I got, I got some fishes for you, amen. Hey, imagine if they didn't cast out that net and they went home. That was a good day for them fishermen that they caught some fish. They took a pretty penny home and was able to feed their family. God don't do no halfway business. God will provide for you and will provide for your family when you feel like throwing in the towel and you've cleaned everything up. You think you got it all cleaned up. We can't clean the church house up. We can't clean nobody up, amen. We can't clean the fish, like some people say, until you catch them. Can't clean the fish until you catch them. Too many people want to clean the fish and they're lost, amen. They don't even know the Lord Jesus. But one thing is this, I, I don't want to get out in left field, but I want to say this, that they made a, <clears throat> they made a big, a big decision. Amen. To throw that net back out. And we're not talking about no little nets, Brother Charles. We're talking about some nets that take some work to throw out, amen, and to clean them. And they clean their nets and they're ready to go home. Got it all packed up. And sure enough, Jesus comes by. And you say, hold on a second, preacher. We serve a Jesus that gives us everything we want. Gives us everything in life, amen. And we just ask for it and God's going to bless us. And we just ask for a car and God's going to give us a car. We just ask for a house and God's going to give us a house without any trials, without any suffering, without losing something, amen. Well, I'm going to tell you something tonight. We serve a God that will allow you to go through some things despite if you like it or not. God is on the throne. God makes the decisions. If God wants you to go through it, go through it with a smile on your face and joy inside of your heart and song on your lips. And I promise you one thing, you'll come out on top. You'll come out and you'll say, glory to God, I'm glad I went through that with a smile on my face. Now, Oh, Lord, my goodness. I got a witness to another one. I've already witnessed to 49 this week. My goodness, this is horrible. Do it with the smile on your face, amen? Do it with like you've been in touch with Jesus. Do it where people take recognition that you have been in touch with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I promise you one thing, when you feel like throwing in the towel, and if God tells you to go back out and to throw the net back out, throw it out again. And if you put it back up and he tells you to get it out, throw it back out again. There's a blessing waiting on you. There's something waiting on you that God wants to give you if you just walk out on a little bit of faith. God ain't ever told you to do something for no reason. God ain't ever told you to do nothing for no reason. You ever heard the saying, everything's got a purpose? Everything's got a purpose. Me and my wife was talking about it the other day. Even the devil has a purpose. God has a purpose. You have a purpose. Day-to-day -day life, no matter how young you are or how old you are, you have an agenda every single day. Whether it's just to sit there and be lazy. That's still an agenda. Today I'm going to sit here and be lazy. Today I'm going to get up and cut the grass. 
God has an agenda, amen. And one thing is this. <clears throat> God has a book that is perfect. And Jesus Christ is coming back to get the church. He is fulfilling things. I mean, everything's coming to pass and God's lining things up for the second coming of Christ. And if God wants you to be somewhere and to say something, cast that net out. Cast that net out and just do what God tells you to do despite what you feel, despite what's going on in your life. Amen. I want to say this tonight too. Imagine if Jesus, when he was going to Calvary, knew that he was going to hang upon that cross and take lashes upon his back and a crown of thorns upon his head, Brother Josh. And he said, you know what? It ain't convenient. I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in the towel. It ain't convenient I'm going to call 12 legions of angels. We don't serve a Jesus that are just with the convenient route, brother. He said, he said though, they, though they persecute me and they talk about me, nevertheless, I'm going to die for them. Nevertheless, I'm going to ascend up into heaven for them. Nevertheless, I'm going to come back and get the church because I love them tonight. Amen. What a nevertheless Savior that we serve. Got a bunch of Christians that, oh goodness, it ain't convenient. It ain't convenient. It wasn't convenient for Jesus to die for you. It wasn't convenient for Jesus to take a crown of thorns upon his head for you. And we got this convenient Christianity that never says, nevertheless, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go home and ball up in a corner and listen to some prosperity preacher that makes me feel better. Amen. This Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's full of a book that is full of bloodshed, full of misery, full of depression. But I'm thankful today, nevertheless, it's full of joy. It's full of love. It's full of a sound mind. It's full of a God that said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's full of a book that tells us about men of God that went through things, but they were still nevertheless Christians. What do we stand on tonight? We stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ, a firm foundation that ain't found upon the sand. So he is worthy to be praised. Nevertheless, if you feel like you're saved, Nevertheless, if it feels like the waters are getting contrary and you're swimming in the deep end and you can no longer touch bottom and you start scraping the bottom of the barrel, God keeps on supplying. God keeps on supplying. Nevertheless, what goes on in life, if we're living for Him, He's the supplier of all of our needs. Despite if we have clothes on our back and shoes on our feet and a roof over our head, He is worthy for us to be nevertheless Christians, though we be low in number, you didn't come here for me. Coming to get in touch with God, and God will supply our needs. God will send us workers. But the thing is tonight, we must believe it. We got to realize that offenses must come. Stumbling blocks must come. You say, well, why, they, why must they come? We serve a God of love. There's an adversary that is seeking to kill and to destroy the church. And he's got an agenda behind this thing. Offenses must come. There is still flesh wrapped around me and you. We still live in the body, amen. We still live in a sin-corrupt world. Man is going to fall short of God's glory. Man is going to fall short of mine and your standard. Nevertheless, we can still be on fire for God. There's a reason that we can get in our prayer closet and repent. Turn away from them things, amen, and make a 180 and follow the things of Christ. I talked to dear brother Herschel Duncan the other day, and he said, brother, you want God to be in your services? I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Get the worldliness out of the sanctuary and watch God show up. Hey, let me tell you something today. Sometimes we got to listen to advice. Sometimes we got to listen to constructive criticism so we can grow closer to God. Nevertheless, what we feel, surround yourself around men that's got wisdom. Surround yourself around women that's got wisdom. Though they may be boring, they've been through some things that could teach me and you. Sometimes it may be boring to listen to a conversation. But one thing is this. Maybe you can learn something that will help you along life's journey. Amen. I thank the good Lord when somebody brings something to my attention to help me to grow closer to Him. Bring it to me. Amen. I ain't going to look down on you. I want to grow closer to God. I'm still teachable. I'm still humble. But pray that we can all stay that way so that God can use us. Though we serve a God that is loving and merciful and just, nevertheless, 
He can have fellowship with sin. He can have fellowship with sin. No amens on that one, amen. Amen the whole time, but no amens on that one. He came fellowship with the sin that dwells deep down inside of our hearts, amen. To be a nevertheless Christian, you gotta realize today you gotta choose whom you serve. You say, hold on, say, preach, I, I, I serve God. Do you walk it out? Do you live it out, amen? That's a question, men, you gotta ask ourselves. We need to examine ourselves. Examine me, O oh Lord, like the Bible says back there in Psalms, chapter number 26 and verse number 2. Why was there great men in the Bible? They said, God, though I be thrown in prison, nevertheless I'll serve you. Though I be shipwrecked, nevertheless I serve you. They didn't say, God, I'm going to throw in the towel. So and so said, my, my hair is too short. So and so talked about my dress this week. I didn't like the way the business meeting went. Let me tell you something today. Christian, dive deep down inside of this Bible. There is true trials. There is true tribulations. That has overtook man. And all they can do was lean upon God. But you want to know something? We got, we got a solution to it all. Man, I'm sick. I'll go get some medicine. Where's God at in that? Oh, man, I'm, I got something. I, I looked up the other day. I had this little bump pop up on my hand. I didn't pray for it to go away. You know what I did? I looked it up on Google. Looked it up on Google what it was. I had to get rid of it. It was an abscess and I popped it. Amen. I'm telling you this today. We got a lot of things inside of this world that can make us lean upon medicine, make us lean upon drugs, make us lean upon the social media and the president and the doctors more than we lean upon God. And we want to be nevertheless Christians inside of America that's got everything we need right at our fingertips. Bible talks about those that give their children good gifts. Gives them good gifts, but they're, but they're evil. Evil people even know how to give good gifts. Evil people can give you $1,000. Lost people can give you money and help you, help you a little bit. But one thing is this. There's a God that can only help your soul like no other man, like no other woman, like no church, amen. There's a great God. There's a marvelous God that loves us tonight and cares about us tonight and wants to help us to be a nevertheless Christian. Let's go to John chapter 16 and verse number 1 for just a second. John chapter 16 and verse number 1. Give us some nevertheless Christians, amen. Let's pray for some people with the backbone. Let's pray for some people that will stand bold on the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have not because you ask not. Let's pray for some prayer warriors. Let's pray for God to fill this church up with the Spirit. The Bible talks about the Holy Ghost, Brother Charles, and the Holy Spirit, but it also talks about a filling of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about filling His presence, like feel, like a touch. I'm talking about filled up like a cup. A filling, amen. Hey, for me and you to be a nevertheless Christian, we got to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God Almighty. The Holy Spirit don't play around with sin. He don't play around with that little bit that you're dibbling and you're dabbling in and your heart ain't lined up with the Spirit of God, amen? To be a nevertheless Christian, we better realize, take a look at that missionary board and go take a look at Brother James Reed when he comes and he stands behind this pulpit and dropping Bibles off in another country that's illegal. Go look at some videos where they're opening up Bibles in China outside of these bags and they're fighting trying to kill each other over to get a Bible. Amen? Nevertheless, what are we? Nevertheless, where do we stand, amen? Lined up to this book. Let's judge ourselves to this book. Not judge ourselves to Brother Jack Howes. Not judge ourselves to Brother Charlie Jones. Not judge ourselves to Brother Nathan McCoy. It ain't worried about me being a hypocrite. Don't worry about what I got going on. Worry about what you got going on. Pray for the man of God. Be the nevertheless Christian. They don't listen when somebody talks, says something negative, amen. Turn the deaf ear when somebody's got something to say. And that's where the power of God comes upon you and me is when we just worry about spreading the gospel. John chapter 16 and verse number 1 says these things have I spoken to you that you should not be offended. They should, now listen to this. Jesus tells them what's going to happen. Jesus tells them what's going to go on. Watch. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God a service. Hold on a second. That's the same Jesus that died for me 
And he's going to allow us to die? He's going to allow our people to die? And he's telling us what's going to go on? That's the Jesus I'm talking about, red letter, right here. And he's telling them what's going to go on. But he still loves them, Brother Josh. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes Jesus will allow you that to know that there's some trouble coming. There's trouble coming to the church. There's wolves in sheep's clothing coming to the church. This thing is going to wax worse and worse until Jesus comes. But thank God that he sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to bring all things to remembrance and to seal us until the day of redemption. Glory to God. Thank God that we know some things are coming so that we can look forward to what's to come. When things start going worse, look up for thy redemption draweth nigh. When things start to go downhill, look up for thy redemption draweth nigh. These things must come to pass. But me and you, my goodness, we act like we haven't read our Bible, Brother Josh. We act like we ain't read the book and we ain't finished the book, amen? Some of us need to get in the book and to realize this thing is a trial. This thing is a legit battlefield on this thing and it's rough. And people will look down on you. They will persecute you. They will talk about your wife. They will talk about your children. But nevertheless, keep on going for God. It's a mindset. It's something that's deep down inside of your heart. If you want something bad enough, you're going to get it. If you strive hard enough to get something, you're going to get it. A lot of us will fight harder, fight harder to get a car that we want and to talk them down on the price than the gospel. Defend the Bible, the King James Bible. A lot of us will fight harder to get a good deal on something. Oh, give me a good deal. I, I've been trying on it. I've heard several people talking about books and talking about this and there's something they like that so-and-so got. And they'll tell me, every time I see them, I'm working on them. I want that. I want it so bad. Every time I see him, I work on him. Every time I see him, I work on him. Every time I see him, I work on him. What if we was that dedicated to God? What if we was that dedicated to reading our book, amen? Wake up in the morning, and as soon as we wake up and roll out of bed, God help us all, amen? But get on fire from God and get, a, get, get our day started with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus got along with the Father. Jesus got along with the Father. And for us to think that we don't have to get along with God, shame on me and you. Shame on me and you to think that we're better than Jesus. To think that we ain't going to suffer nothing nor have no trials or tribulations. Shame on us. If he went through it, surely me and you are going to go through it. We all have faults. We all have failures. I'm not perfect. I'm on the same battlefield you are. But one thing is this. Nevertheless, keep on praying. Keep on striving after the kingdom of heaven. Lay your treasures up in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt and where thieves don't break through nor steal. And in verse number 7, I want to say this. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Jesus is telling you the truth inside of his word tonight. That you will have things that go on. That you will have arguments that you will have downfalls, that you will have all this stuff going on. But nevertheless, Brother Josh, you know what I see? Nevertheless, I'm not lying to you. Nevertheless, I'm not lying to you. Not only do I see nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. Nevertheless, I'm not lying to you. It means a lot more when somebody tells me I'm not lying to you than I'm just telling you the truth. I expect you to tell the truth, amen? I hope that you tell the truth. But whenever I know something ain't a lie and I can put my trust in somebody, thank God for some people that we can put our trust in. Thank God for some faithful people that say, hey, I know you ain't going to want to hear this, but nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. Won't you just tell the truth? Won't we just tell the truth with what's going on? You ain't hiding it from God. All you're doing is running and running and running farther and farther and farther away from God. 
One line leads to another. Little bit of this leads to a little bit more. Little bit of this leads to a little bit more. To be a nevertheless Christian. Amen. We see in John chapter 16. The nevertheless I tell you the truth. God's word is truth. God's given us the truth. You want to be a nevertheless Christian, Brother Josh? Stick close to the truth. You want to be a nevertheless Christian? Say, God, whatever's going on in my life, nevertheless, I'm going to serve you. Let's get prepared for what's to come. <clears throat> now I want to say this too, and we'll end up right here, Brother Josh, if you'll come sing a song for us. I want to say this, the disciples told Jesus, after all this stuff was going on, they told Jesus, we toured all the night. We already brought our nets up and this, that, and the other. They thought they was going to tell Jesus something he didn't know. You can't tell Jesus something he already don't know. He knows what's going on in your life. Don't throw it down and say, God, I, I, I got this going on, I got that going on. Nevertheless, I'm going to serve you. How about we just do it, amen? How about we just be about the Father's business and get something done for God tonight? <clears throat> If you're here today and you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ or if you're watching by the way of Facebook, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Though you be a drug addict, though you be a liar, though you be a sorcerer or a whoremonger, though you've been in and out of jail, though you've been in and out of prison, though everybody looks down on you, nevertheless, there's a God that loves you despite all of your sin. He'll pick you up, dust you off, and use you a little bit. Brother Josh, I've seen young people in the ministry that just got saved or maybe just got inside of the book and no more Bible than people that's been in it for 10, 15 years. Been in it for about a year or two, amen. They'll tell you, amen. They'll tell you some things and they know some things. You talk to some people and they, they barely even touch the book. But they're Christians and they, 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 there's nothing wrong with leaving your Bible in the pew if you got something one at home, amen. But I'm going to tell you this. Talk to Christians. Where's your Bible at? I leave it in the church pew. Leave it in the church pew. True conversations. Life comes along, stuff gets rough, and trials get rough, Brother Josh. You know what happens when they want to leave church? They got to go get their Bible. Then they leave the church. Imagine the conviction that will settle in, knowing good and well, because you ain't a nevertheless Christian. You ain't been inside of that book. You got to go back to the house of God to get your sword that should be beside you. That should be deep down inside of your heart. Hide the Word of God inside of your heart that you may not sin against Him. No more baseball stats than Scripture. God, I can't, I can't learn the Scripture. I don't got a memory for it. Know all the baseball stats and the football stats and the basketball stats and remember this from 1972. Remember who did this in 1979 and all these different things but can't remember one verse of Scripture. Don't tell me you can't remember Scripture and then show me you got a memory, amen. Don't prove to me that you can, can't remember Scripture. My mind's bad, but you remember everything else. Almost remember a whole grocery list. Amen, but can't remember the Word of God and you're supposed to be reading every day. Not shame on you. That's not what I'm telling you tonight. But I want to tell you one thing. If you want to be a nevertheless Christian that will finish this thing to the end, get inside of the truth. And when you get inside of this truth, and when Jesus starts to tell you the truth, despite if you like it or not, Brother Charles, if I tell you to this day that there's some things in this book that I don't have to still work on, I'd be lying to you. I gotta dive head first into the truth. God, give me truth. I mean, I like that word truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Give me some truth, amen. Tell me something that is that I need to hear. Give me some things that are profitable for the kingdom and heaven, a uh, kingdom of God. Amen. But we're worried about this, that, and the other. But the first thing that should be in my own mind and your mind, and the key word I said right there is should, not like I have it all worked out, but it should be, Brother jo or brother Charles, is this book right here, Brother Doug. That should be the first thing, amen. And while we're sitting here in this pew, or inside of this church, and we're finished up after this, I promise, is this. There's enough people I've seen inside of the church house, 
convicts me, it hurts my soul. Knowing good and well the things that I've heard and I've seen. Knowing good and well that I have a heart for them. I got a heart for you guys. They want to see us all grow. Not that one, the Bible says one man esteemeth higher than another, but one man esteemeth higher this day, and then the next day this man esteems higher, and the next day this man esteems higher than another. But I want to tell you this, we're all on the same battlefield. We all got the same trials. We all got the same tri tribulations. And there's times I sit inside of this church, or I sit inside of another church, and I got to sit down. My amen shoes I had on last week, I had to take off. The amen shoes, Brother Charles, that I had on last week, I had to take off and humble myself and sit there with shame facing, being ashamed of the sin that I'm living in so I could be a nevertheless Christian for God. Not saying amen, even though everybody else is saying it. Knowing good and well that God is dealing with my soul, dealing with my heart, dealing with my mind. And there's people that will sit in the church and got enough bonus and enough confidence to say amen to a message knowing good and well how they're living at home. Amen, preacher, knowing good and well their heart ain't lined up with the book and want to be a nevertheless Christian for God, lying straight to God's face and want to get something done for Him. Amen? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's times me and you, if you say amen to every message, Brother Charles, or anybody else, if you say amen to every message, there's something wrong. You should not be able to say amen to every message that is ever preached. You should be able to, every now and then, if you are inside of this book and you want truth, if you want truth, God will give it to you. And if you're seeking for truth, God will give it to you. Me and you can't say amen every message because me and you ain't perfect without Jesus. Sometimes we got to sit here just like this. Sit there quiet in the shame of mind and your sin. But until we get ashamed of our sin, Main Cross Baptist Church is not going to grow for the glory and honor of God as long as those that are mocking Him. We can't mock God, amen. We cannot mock God. <clears throat> this ain't a legalistic message. It's a message to help you, amen. Help me so we can get something done for Him. Be ashamed of your sin. Be ashamed of the filthiness and the corruptness that caused Jesus Christ to have to die upon that old rugged cross. Shame face it, amen. And bow the head and bow the knee and surrender to God. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you once again in the sweet and lovely name of Jesus. Pray, Lord, you'd bless this dear congregation. Open up the hearts and the souls and the minds of these dear people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 276, where he leads me. <clears throat>